Hello there, listeners, uh, and welcome uh, to our broadcast at the Cyber and Space Security Conference. My name is Marili Hendriksson, and uh, I'm the moderator for today's broadcast. Um, a couple of words also from my side. Uh, I'm uh, working as a cybersecurity project lead at uh, Startup Estonia, uh, which is a governmental institution with the aim to supercharge the startup ecosystem in Estonia. Within the team, I'm the one who is uh, looking at the cybersecurity startup ecosystem development uh, with the aim also to uh, support the startups um, so that we would have many unicorns in the future. Quite ambitious. So, I'm very happy that uh, today's topic uh, for the broadcast is cybersecurity on Earth and in space. And we are going to compare the, uh, the two domains and whether they are different or, or how much uh, and how many similarities there are. We are also going to look at uh, what kind of business opportunities there lay and, uh, and what are the perhaps more interesting or intriguing part of uh, uh, cyber in space and earth. Here I'm not alone today. I'm very, very happy that uh, from Scotland is uh, there is uh, David Ferguson with me. Hello, David. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Hi from Scotland. It's a pleasure to have you. I know that you are um, uh, you have uh, lots of experience uh, from the uh, defense and cyber and uh, data uh, sectors and clusters. So very very happy to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and I look forward to to, to discussing the topic with you. Very good. One of the really hot topics that we have is that um, as the space domain is really booming currently. Uh, what we see and what is uh, uh, largely supported also for, by the uh, many institutions, public and private, is that uh, uh, many new initiatives, new projects, uh, entrepreneurs, startups are entering the, uh, the, the space landscape. Uh, pretty often, as they are quite small, uh, they don't ha uh, uh, have the capabilities of uh, focus on cybersecurity and security issues of their solutions. Mm. So uh, what do you think, uh, what should and could be uh, changed within uh, this framework uh, as, as the, the need is there? I think that's a, that's a really interesting comment insofar as the, the potential vulnerability that mm -hmm the introduction of multiple small organizations could potentially mm -hmm. bring the risks that that could bring to the, the, the space ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's certainly something which needs to be addressed. What we have is we now have an ecosystem which is financially much easier to, to launch in. Mm -hmm. um, it is that there are much fewer constraints to be able to access the market. Mm -hmm. Therefore, lots of small organizations are going to have the potential to enter the market. The risk there is that we need to bring within supply chain, we need to bring a standardization mm -hmm. of the, the acceptable security protocols that are engaged mm -hmm. and implemented mm -hmm. so that we can see a consistent security wrap taking place from the start of the, the product life cycle right through the whole development within the sector. Mm -hmm. And that will, be, that will be fundamental to securing the sector. Mm -hmm. And bringing consistency to that also helps to open up the international opportunities, cross-border collaborations, because if, that, if there is a consistency in the security wrap which takes place throughout the supply chain, mm -hmm. then for the end user, they can be aware of what that security looked like from start to finish. So mm -hmm. consistency across national borders will mm -hmm. certainly open up opportunities for collaboration between many of the small international organizations and collaboration mm -hmm. for startups, which will help to accelerate that market and improve the, the overall delivery and speed of delivery of new technologies within the sector. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this would mean that the um, application of ISO standards on cybersecurity would be 
uh, quite reasonable. Um, application, uh, applying them requires also money, uh, so additional money perhaps. Uh, do you see uh, any specific uh, support organizations in there? Who should be supporting that or nourishing that situation where the, uh, the, uh, the uh, applying the ISO standards on cyber uh, would be very reasonable and very doable, let's say, ask like that. Yes, so I, th I think it, it may be controversial to mm -hmm. say, but I think that, that part of that has to be driven by government. Mm -hmm. um, now, the government, by, by driving the, or, or by providing funding mm -hmm. to, in order to drive the, the, the security aspect, mm -hmm. yes, that improves the sector, but it doesn't just improve the sector. It, pr it, it improves the, the national position insofar as cybersecurity, because once, mm -hmm. once that starts to roll out, it's not just space sector. Mm -hmm. That's not the only sector that we need to look to oh, yes. to engage and have consistency mm -hmm. in cyber. Mm -hmm. So really, as we move towards a much more digitized society, governments are going to have to, to accept that security is fundamental to the success of those individual sectors. Mm -hmm. By improving security, by funding security, Mm -hmm. You not only improve that individual sector, mm -hmm. but you improve the skills mm -hmm. of the individuals who move across those sectors. Mm -hmm. So as mm -hmm. you have employment moving between sectors, you mm -hmm. don't then have a situation whereby they move from a non-secure focus sector to a secure focus sector. You create mm -hmm. that benchmark, that level within mm -hmm. your, um, your employment market where there is a fundamental understanding of mm -hmm. the importance and the value of cybersecurity. Exactly. And the, uh, with the uh, application of standards, you acquire also the uh, badge of a trust that you can bring with you wherever you go. So uh, that would be, uh, although initially it wouldn't be a fast track, afterwards it will be a fast track for all the companies, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ab absolutely, mm -hmm. and it makes it it makes it much easier to engage with with overseas organisations mm -hmm. because once you have that certification, mm -hmm. you can then it's a very easy way for the for the the recipient or for your trading partner mm -hmm. to understand that you have actually understood the requirement of security and mm -hmm. that you are adhering to that, and the mm -hmm. fact that the standards will be audited and monitored mm -hmm. independently. Mm -hmm. Brings, brings a validation to the work and the security aspect that's in place. Um, what I'd like to do is perhaps give an overview of the organization Scotland is that, that I'm working with um, and give some context as to how that sits and relates to what's happening within the, the space sector in Scotland. And um, so if, if I may, I'd like to just share some slides run through some slides, which yes. will hopefully give some background mm -hmm. and uh, and in doing so, then hopefully give some context to, to what it is that we're doing in Scotland. Yes, absolutely. Right. Thank you. So, the, so my name is David Ferguson and I work for an organisation called Scotland Is. We are based in Scotland and our focus is on developing economic sectors within Scotland. Today, I'd, I'd like to talk to you about the, what Scotland is, does mm -hmm. and how we are engaging with the space sector, the growing and rapidly growing space sector within Scotland. Mm -hmm. So who, who are Scotland is? Well, we're the, we're the trade body and cluster management organisation. We are the trade body for the digital tech sector. So we engage with... All organisations across Scotland who are working and developing within the digital tech market. We're also a cluster management organisation. And what is it that a cluster management organisation does? We, we manage the multiple clusters. And in our case, it is the, the data cluster and cyber cluster within Scotland. Within mm -hmm. the, the data cluster, that includes organisations who are involved in AI development, in the capture and analytics of, of data, mm -hmm. in AI application building, and 
with particular relevance to the space sector, also the, the geospatial sector. So we have a number of members within the data cluster who are solely based within the geospatial market. And within the cyber cluster, we are engaging with security product developers. We are engaging with, with testing and forensic consultancies, looking at security auditing and looking at application testing within the, mm -hmm. the, the cyber environment. So looking at the, the reach that Scotland has across Scotland is has across the, the Scottish market. Within our, our trade body perspective, our, our reach within the digital tech sector, we are out to approximately 300 organisations across Scotland. Within the data cluster, we have in excess of 400 organisations. And within the cyber cluster, we have over 280. So mm -hmm. in total, we are reaching approximately 1,000 organisations within Scotland. Mm -hmm. And within those 1,000 organisations, um, within the member organisations, we have in excess of 60,000 people employed. Um, so a significant reach within the Scottish market and therefore a significant understanding of what is happening within Scotland. Sorry, as a question, 68,000, did, did I uh, hear you, heard you correctly? 60,000. Oh, 60,000. Impressive. Yes. Really impressive. Yep. 60,000 60, people across right. Scotland. So yes, it's, a, it's a, a large number of people that we can reach out to and therefore also that we get a, a distillation, hopefully, of some of their knowledge. What is the percentage of the uh, total workforce uh, in Scotland then? Good question. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what percentage 60,000 is. I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. But it sounds a really uh, large amount. All right, let's go further. Yes, thank you. Um, so prior to, to moving on with the slides, I'd like to just give a, a little bit of, of context. Yes. So within my, my role within Scotland is, as Marley correctly says, I, I come from a, from a defence background. Mm -hmm. um, supplying into the, the satellite and the um, earth station mm -hmm. market for, for comms. So I have a grounding within the space engagement. I then developed into cybersecurity and from cybersecurity then joined Scotland Is. So I have an understanding across those sectors um, on the, the development that's taking place. Within Scotland is, I have, I have two roles. I manage the, the data cluster. So I have engagement with all of the organizations and have an understanding of the new applications that are coming to the fore um, mm -hmm. within the geospatial sector and also the development that's taking place within the, the AI sector insofar as developing new applications. Mm -hmm. Additionally, I have a role within the cyber cluster as the cyber development lead which means that I, I assist with the delivery of the management of the cyber cluster, but also I work on specific projects. Mm -hmm. And some of those specific projects currently are looking at mapping the, the technical skills base, um, the knowledge base across Scotland around specialist areas within the cyber environment. And within that, it's been very interesting to see the the areas in which there are significant skills and knowledge within Scotland um, and how that actually has an application across into the space sector, although these skills were not originating from the, skill, from the, the space sector. Mm -hmm. The other project that I'm involved with is looking at the engagement between the cyber sector and the space sector. And we find ourselves in Scotland in a very fortunate position where we have a well-established cyber sector mm -hmm. and we have a rapidly developing and flourishing space sector. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a great opportunity for us to, to have collaboration. Mm -hmm. It is very rare for us to have the ability to bring cyber to a new and evolving market. Mm -hmm. Historically, cyber has very much been brought to established markets 
and then we try and retrofit it into the, the structure of that established market. Mm-hmm. Moment we're fortunate that as space is a new market, it's certainly a new market for Scotland, um, but it's rapidly developing and we are in fact um, on schedule for being the, the, the first European country to have an end-to-end space ecosystem from design mm-hmm. through to launch and then asset management and subsequent operations. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to just run through some of the, the space sector within Scotland just to give some context as to where the cyber engagement is going to be. So within Scotland, we we have launch vehicle design and manufacture. We have a number of organisations working on the development of alternative um, propellants, of alternative fuels and rocket systems. So very interesting to see how that is going to develop. We also have already a well-established payload manufacturing sector. So within, within Glasgow, we have the um, Glasgow builds the most CubeSats of any European city. Mm-hmm. And within Edinburgh, we have the largest centre for informatics within Europe. Mm-hmm. And um, that gives us a great opportunity to, to be able to, to develop the sector and gain an understanding of how the, the sector is operating. Mm-hmm. And within Edinburgh, we have in excess of 170 uh, data science organisations. So a real centre of excellence establishing within um, within Edinburgh and within Scotland, all of which has a real bearing upon the development and the, the services that will be able to be provided within the, the space sector. Additionally, within Scotland, we're currently working for on the development, so we're at the, the test launch stage Mm -hmm. um, for a number of spaceports. Mm -hmm. We have um, three of which, so Sutherland, Shetland and Western Isles, which will be vertical launch, Mm -hmm. and Prestwick, which is developing horizontal launch facilities as well. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing an ecosystem evolve and develop around each of these spaceport centres. So some real growth activity taking place within the Scottish market. Mm-hmm. Obviously, post, post-launch, post um, there is the requirement for operational facilities and asset management. Um, so we have the, the uh, communications networks in place. We have the hardware control systems, um, building the, the data storage. So building databases close to some of the the spaceports so that there is an immediate connection um, for space transfer data Mm -hmm. and looking to develop the the resilience within the the whole ecosystem Mm -hmm. and the end of of asset life management. Mm -hmm. So the the main areas of interest to us, um, certainly from a Scotland this perspective, Mm -hmm. Um, within space is that the the emergence of the crossover between cyber, data, and space. Um, we have overlaps, obviously, just between cyber and space, between data and space. Mm-hmm. But that area of particular interest is the, mm-hmm. the the overlap between those three sectors, and looking at how we can bring cyber to bear on what is ultimately the the core product of space mm-hmm. being the data mm-hmm. and, and how we how we use the cyber the established cyber sector within Scotland to engage mm-hmm. with space mm-hmm. in order to protect the data that is being captured mm-hmm. and then finally those three areas sit within the broader sector of sustainability and mm-hmm particularly apt with with, uh, COP26 happening at the moment within Scotland, Mm -hmm. is the looking to, or the the desire to make the evolving space sector sustainable Mm -hmm. and and to look to introduce that across all of the the sectors 
that will be working to supply and deliver space-based products. Mm -hmm. So coming back to how cyber is, go is engaging within the, the space sector, and particularly, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the areas of specialism within Scotland. So within Scotland, we have a, a, a well-established oil and gas um, mm -hmm. industry, and that really has created a, a great knowledge base around a zero-fail environment. And that's what space is. Mm -hmm. um, space has to be a zero-fail environment. Um, so there is already an understanding of mm -hmm. how to operate with a zero-fail environment, mm -hmm. the application of industrial controls, mm -hmm. um, fundamental to, to the operation, to launch capabilities, to the earth station management, um, the application of critical control systems. Mm -hmm. We are looking at a, a, a market which has a high dependency. So mm -hmm. back to, to zero fail, um, the, the cost of fail is significant. Mm -hmm. It's a high value industry. It's, a, it's um, high value to become involved in and high economic impact Mm -hmm. on failure to deliver services. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a space industry which is absolutely going to become involved as part of critical national infrastructure and as such has to be an extremely secure environment. So we need to bring cyber to bear on the any engagement which is possibly related to critical national infrastructure. Cyber is involved within the, the asset life cycle management. So at end of life mm -hmm. for, a, for a satellite, we need to be, the operator needs to be confident that the, the termination of that satellite will go to plan, will be as expected, um, and there will be no ability for the, the control systems managing that end of life cycle process to be corrupted. Now, how do we how do we bring that to bear? How do we bring security to the space sector? The easiest way that we see within the, the cyber to space engagement is to bring a full security understanding of the supply chain and the supply chain management. So looking at the manufacturing processes, the controls in place, the vulnerabilities around each organization mm -hmm. which is involved in the supply chain, how accessible, how vulnerable are these organizations, what are the consequences of a data breach, what is the consequences of malicious code being implanted upon a product, mm -hmm. and how can that be monitored throughout the full life cycle development prior to launch and then the management of the asset once it is in space. Once it's there, there is nothing we can do to physically get back and change the product. So we need to be mm -hmm. absolutely sure that all security vulnerabilities have been addressed prior to launch. And then there are no, hopefully, no hidden surprises within the, the operation of that asset within space. Mm -hmm. So looking at the whole supply chain management, critical that cyber is involved at every stage of that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, what is the, what is the primary output? What's the product of space and the development of mm -hmm. the space market? It's data. It's data coming back to Earth for us to, to use in multiple applications, for us to, to look at environmental controls, to look mm -hmm. at... Um, climate controls, to, to be able to, to transmit data, to be able to, to offer rapid communications. All of that data needs to, it needs to be secure. It needs to be secured because the integrity of that data is paramount to the output mm -hmm. from the analytics that are, that's carried out around that. If we cannot secure and ensure the integrity of the data that we're producing, then we have no reliability 
on the, the integrity of any analytics that we do around that data. Mm -hmm. So in summary, looking at the, the whole ecosystem, how does, what does cyber and space look like? Well, primarily cyber and space looks quite similar to the cyber market as it currently exists. We're going to take the current applications and apply them to the management of product development and the data that travels through the whole ecosystem within space. And in securing that, we are able to make the best and greatest initial impact to the security across the whole space environment. Mm 